Live Text Access – Training for Real-Time Intralingual Subtitlers Unit 6 – Velotype Element 1 – Psychocognitive Skills Listening and typing at the same time – created by SSML and Velotype The introduction to this unit has already explained what velotyping is and also what the psychocognitive skills are that a velotypist must possess. This video lecture is aimed at letting you know about the effort model at the basis of the skill of listening and typing at the same time and at letting you learn the skill of listening and typing at the same time in two specific contexts. Where verbatim accuracy is required, you will learn to listen and repeat at the same time. Where sensatum accuracy is required, you will learn to listen and reformulate at the same time. This is the agenda of this presentation. I will first recall the skills of the velotypist to then concentrate on the so-called effort model which is at the basis of simultaneous interpreting a mental activity very close to real-time subtitling. I will finally focus on shadowing, a manifold exercise that you will be requested to do along the course to develop, reinforce and finally maintain this skill in two different contexts, verbatim subtitling and sensatum subtitling. Section 1. The Skills of the Velotypist As you have seen, a velotypist has to do many things at the same time. In this element, we will deal with the psychocognitive skill of listening and typing at the same time, which is the bulk of the velotyping skills. In particular, for a velotypist to be able and become a professional in the field, he or she has to first develop the capacity of doing two things at the same time, listening and understanding the speaker while typing, so that real-time subtitles are produced. While you can only develop this competence by the time and thanks to ad hoc exercises, you may be interested in understanding the rationale behind it, the effort model, and then shadowing as a way to develop it. Section 2. The Effort Model We have talked about the effort model. What is it? In 1985, Daniel Child proposes the so-called Modèle d'effort, or effort model based on the observation of the mistakes done by trainees into simultaneous interpreting. Daniel Gile realizes that trainees do mistakes that are so banal that the reason for these mistakes cannot be a poor command of the language. He understands that this is due to other reasons, mainly that our brain is to be trained if we wanted to do more than one non-automatic thing at the same time. Our brain has the capacity to process only one non-automatic process at a time. To understand this, it is important to know that mental activities can be of three types. Automatic, like that at the basis of breathing. Semi-automatic, like that at the basis of walking and non-automatic, like that at the basis of actually listening or guests repeating or reformulating what somebody has just said. The effort model is thought for simultaneous interpreting, but it can be easily adapted to real-time subtitling. Adapting Giles notions to real-time subtitling, while typing, we mainly do four non-automatic actions at the same time. Listening to the speaker and understanding, which implies that we analyze 
the waves he or she produces and turn them into meanings. Memory, which is the capacity to temporarily store meaning before doing something else with it. Production, which is the fact of producing sentences that need to both adequately, adequately render the meanings uttered by the speaker and being typed correctly. And coordination, which is the fact of monitoring one's performance so that a balance is found between these three efforts. Now, these efforts require a lot of processing capacity. As said, we need to train our brain to find a balance between these four efforts. As long as our processing capacity is enough to carry on these mental activities simultaneously, we then do a good job. If it is not because of fatigue or other reasons, we may experience breakdowns in one of the activities with negative consequences on the quality of the subtitles. In particular, a good performance is possible when the following conditions occur. First of all, the speaker should speak properly, not too fast, with a clear voice and not too technically. Then it is important the fellow typist knows the topic or has studied it. Moreover, the fellow typist must work in a well-equipped environment and with working turns not too stressful. And finally, the interaction with the machine should be at its utmost. In case one or more of these conditions are not met, more processing capacity is required in one of the four efforts to bridge the gap. This may cause a breakdown in one of the other activities, which in the end go to the detriment of the quality of the subtitles. In particular, if the speaker is challenging, it will be harder for the fellow typist to listen and understand. If the topic is not well mastered or totally unknown, it will be harder to remember what the speaker says. If the fellow typist is not in good mental and or physical condition, it will be harder to produce coherent subtitles. And finally, if the interaction with the machine is not good, coordination breakdowns may occur. In the next video lectures, we will see how to cope with each of these situations that may cause bad performance. In this video lecture, we will try and make sure that in good conditions you are going to be able and perform well. Moreover, we will try to see how it is possible to semi-automate some of the simultaneous non-automatic actions required in phallotyping to reduce the processing capacity needed for each of them. One way to go for that is shadowing, which we will see in the next section. Section 3. Shadowing In this second session, we will deal with the notion of shadowing as a tool to develop and semi-automate the psychocognitive skill of listening and typing at the same time. Shadowing means you listen to a speech and you repeat it. There is no need to involve the software for the moment being. However, you should know what it means to repeat. To our understanding, there are four types of shadowing. Literatum shadowing, verbatim shadowing, sensatum shadowing and signatum shadowing. The difference lies in the degree to which you should repeat the source text, the speech you are listening to. Literatum shadowing means you should repeat every single sound you hear of the speaker. Every speaker, even the most trained one, makes use of given and recurrent features of orality when speaking. This means that you should repeat not just words, but any of them, even words that you don't understand the meaning of, as well as recurrent examples of orality. These may be fillers like well, 
you know, kind of, you see, etc. Extra sounds like um, uh, mm, etc. Interjections like uh, ah, ow, ak. Barbarisms are words that each of us pronounces his or her own way. Hey, na, what's up? Verbatim shadowing means you should repeat every distinct meaningful element of speech you hear as uttered by the speaker, mistakes included. This means that you should repeat every single lexical item, like house, government, Spain, etc. Grammar items like the, when, for, etc. Acronyms like GDP, and CRA, OWL, etc., and foreign words and expressions like ad nauseam, bon voyage, gnocchi, etc. Sensatum shadowing is a bit more complex and less precise as a notion. It means you should repeat every single meaning uttered by the speaker. A meaning being any concept expressed as a word a clause or a sentence. You can either repeat these words as in verbatim shadowing or re-express them by using other words. For example, you can make use of synonyms, both horizontal synonyms like aim instead of objective and vertical synonyms like flower instead of anemone. You can also reformulate the utterance. For example, you can say yes instead of I tend to agree, or we, inst we instead of you and I. Or you can strategically omit some elements in a sentence that not necessarily add something to the overall meaning. For example, instead of saying Carlo talks so as to try and explain this notion, you can simply say Carlo talks to explain this. Finally, signatum shadowing is the form of shadowing that is aimed at repeating every single sign, meaning any meaningful occurrence in a speech event that adds information to the ideal reader of the transcription of signatum shadowing. This means not just the single sentences that one hears like good morning, but also relevant punctuation marks like comma period, question mark, etc. As in, good morning, period. Signatum also means paraverbal events like the tone of voice, intonation, volume, etc. As in, good morning, period, he shouts. Signatum finally means nonverbal events like applauses, cheering, a bell ringing, as in, good morning, period, applauses. Summary. Summary. In this video lecture, we have introduced the main competence of the fellow typist, the psychocognitive skill of listening to the source text and simultaneously repeating it. In particular, we have dealt with two important aspects, a theoretical one, that is the effort model, and the more practical one, shadowing. The effort model is at the basis of this cognitive process that involves doing more things at the same time. We have seen that balancing the efforts these simultaneous actions require is always needed to avoid breakdowns. One way to go for that is trying to semi-automatize these actions. To do so, shadowing is the exercise to start with. It consists in listening a speech and repeating it literatim or sound for sound, verbatim or word for word, sensatum or meaning for meaning, and signatum or sign for sign. In the homework session, we will see how to do this in practice. Exercises. Exercises. The exercises for this video lecture are in the trainer's guide and the PowerPoint file.
LTA, Live Text Access, Universiteit Autonoma de Barcelona, SDI, Internationale Hochschule, Scuola Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici, ZDF, Digital, European Federation of Hard of Hearing People, FHO, Velotype, Sub-T Access, European Certification and Qualification Association, ECQA. Co-funded by the Erasmus Plus Program of the European Union. Erasmus Plus Project 2018-1-DE01-KA203-00421. The information and views set on this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies, nor any person acting on their behalf, may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained here.